So welcome to uh, our presentation today. Thanks for having us. We are Marketplace.org, which is the website for the public radio show of the same name. Um, so we launched on Drupal two months ago. And so we're going to show you, well, I'll take you on a tour of the site. And then I'm going to turn it over to these guys, Paul and Abhishek, who's our designer and developer. They can give you a little bit more um, sort of information about how we built it, how we're maintaining it, and how we're adding new features to it. I sort of manage it from the product level, so editorial content, underwriting, um, new features, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and you guys can feel free to chime in anytime. So essentially, um, our rate, our we we have multiple radio programs, um, and they're sort of the primary business. We serve 10 million listeners a week, and we earn all of our revenue, basically. We're a nonprofit company, but we, um, it's like about $14 million to keep the organization running. So that's a lot of money. Um, most of that comes from the radio. The web element is just sort of a small, has always been a small side business. But about two years ago, as the, they saw sort of the media industry imploding around them, they realized they needed to follow what newspapers were doing or trying to do, what um, magazines, what television. Now radio is in a good place where everybody still listens to the radio. And there will be 10 million people listening to us for the next 10 years as baby boomers continue to use the radio. But if you went to CES last week, which I got to go to, you'll see that the car dashboard is changing. It's becoming internet connected. And um, everybody carries around an iPhone or a tablet. And so serving our content to those new places is sort of the next thing we have to figure out. So primarily what we do is audio content. We produce about three hours of audio each day. And so the website was designed primarily to serve that audio. Uh, but what, we, what we're all, also experimenting with is video and articles and interactive elements. Um, and then um, another sort of reason for using Drupal is we're also distributing our audio content to lots of different places other than our website. So iTunes is our big distribution outlet. Um, we serve most of our podcast downloads through iTunes, iTunes. But we also do through Stitcher and through Slacker, which is a basically a Pandora-style service. And um, hundreds of other little services that basically scrape RSS feeds looking for audio files. Uh, and then there's also new sort of things we need to serve. We, we need to build, we've built our first iPhone app. Um, to play our audio shows, but we need to in, in improve on that and then launch it on new platforms. So when I talk about our website a lot in our organization, I don't talk about it as a website. I talk about it as a place to store all of our content, and the website's just a free thing that comes along with it um, that shows everything. Really, it's sort of how do, you, how do you store your content so you can distribute it to the web and then to the thousand other places that it needs to go. Um, so one way to do that is to really organize it and um, structure it in a good way. So we've done that in two, basically three different ways, two different ways. One is through a sh um, sort of our top navigation, which is a show. So Marketplace, which airs every day at 2.30 in California or 2 o'clock in California, um, is, a pro is a show which happens as an episode five days a week. And so if you think about the next level down from a show, you have episodes. And so every show up in the top navigation header also contains a series of episodes. With that, you can browse it through a calendar um, or our little slideshow up top here. And then within each show, it's made up of segments. So usually we have 12 segments in our PM broadcast. And so if you go to today's show, um, go there. Biome. You'll see it gets the show gets a little description here. It gets an image. It gets an audio file, which you can stream, which you can download. And then it has a series of segments that are all um, individual stories. And so this structure is really important as we distribute it to lots of different places. Because if, you're, if you go to the app now, you need an interface to dig down deeper into a show 
or you need, when you build the mobile version, for example, it's important that you have this little download audio really handy. Um, so this idea of a show, you know, that show to episode to segment, is sort of one structural element on our site. And you can see that with whatever show you go into. Um, the next way we organize content is through a topic. So let's go to tech. Well, it's actually not one of our best topics. But um, let's go to economy. So topics are, uh, I call it, I, th I think of them parallel to shows. So it's just another big box of, another big bucket of content. And within topics, um, you have the ability to create as many special collections as you want. So special collections are sort of miniature buckets of content featured in a topic. And then, again, each one of those has a series of stories in this case. Um, but this is also how you aggregate any type of content. Um, and then if you go into one of these, uh, let's go into, let's go to this guy right here, Maps Housing. So this, when you go into a special collection now, um, you're, you can do lots of cool things. So we have, this is actually a good example of uh, once we talk about a little bit about the structure of the page. But this is just a sort of an element at the top with a list of stories that are tagged with this special collection. And um, it allows it to us to relate all those stories throughout the site. Um, another just cool thing that um, Paul put together is that we, brand, we have sub-branding as you get throughout the site. So if you're on a story that's part of um, a special collection, it carries that branding wherever it goes. So that's important to our advertisers who want to own a section of the site. And so you say, they say, like, I want to sponsor your economics channel. So everywhere you go on the site, it can carry that, that ability to do that. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the home page. Um, I'll kind of keep skimming through this. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Um, again, what you're seeing throughout all of these teaser areas here is we're just promoting either a topic or a special collection. Um, and so we're, we're able to um, make most of the site dynamically update so that we don't have to have a lot of producers man maintaining everything. We just basically you know, program different areas of the site to present either a show or a uh, topic-based content. Uh, let's go into a story here. So this is sort of the story level. Um, here's a great bug that you guys can see. So we, uh, you know, I'll get to all the, after we go through all the bad, all the great stuff, we can talk about all the bad stuff. We're ha we have a lot of strange sort of um, caching bugs, or in this case, it's not serving the branded <coughs> header, which you see. You're in the e European debt crisis. And what you should see is Paul's wonderfully illustrated sort of example of European debt right here. But it, I, we don't exactly know what the problem is. It'll come back before our presentation's over. Um, what was that? An answer? Yeah. I don't know what you're using. So um, <coughs> basically, you know, just a nicely designed page. Here we're using our, our taxonomy, our topic taxonomy to relate things. Um, we're using the built-in Drupal commenting element. Um, we require people to register, so we don't actually have a lot of comments right now. And why don't we log in so you can see sort of <coughs> from the back end. Anybody have any questions on this so far? I've got a question about the, uh, the sponsoring for the section of the site you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if this is for you or for the developer behind you, but uh, uh, what exactly defines the section of your site is basically what I'm saying. Because there, there are different ways in the Drupal community that people approach that. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love to hear how you guys approached it, what you came to decide, whether it was based on context, whether it was based on... Uh, uh, using using panel C tools, different different ways to define those. Oh, to define those. Well, uh, we're yeah. Maybe uh, I can add yeah, some uh, for things for that. That is how that branding image uh, is is being shown. Is like we have a mini panel, um, and in that a block is being fired, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the context of the page. 
so on basis of that one a css is being fired in the in the head head portion and sometimes that css is fired and sometimes not so right. that is what the problem is and somehow uh, what what i am assuming is like because i actually did not build this whole thing uh, someone a third party we hired a third party contractor who built this thing and i actually came here like just 3 4 four months ago and trying to dive into this whole arena and trying to fix some of the things and uh, i'm not able to fix some of the things because it's like from a platform point of view like a infrastructure problem also so this is right. but to the point yeah to that point you said you're setting a context right so we use Right. Yeah, so we're basically, I think, let me take you into a, a, a story once you get in there, which is all of the, all of the ways sort of that we tag. Meta, you know, tagging is essentially the most important thing. So we, every piece of content that gets published goes through a producer who's sort of deciding where they want this thing to show up. Because, as we said, most of this is um, dynamic. So when you go and create a story, which is pretty much the main uh, piece of content, um, we've sort of broken it up into easy sections for the for the content team, um, but most of it's happening in this tag and organize. So topic is going to drive its URL. So if it's in the business channel, it's going to basically that's going to it'll build that topic. Within the, once you're in a topic, you can choose a, a collection, and so this is so everything has to have one topic. We decided to use one topic because if you go into multiple topics, you start you start getting into like primaries and secondaries and which one demands the right URL right. The, yeah. So we just chose one topic, but special collection allows you to sort of sub brand it. That also shows up in the URL, um, and that's probably what is firing. I mean, that is what's firing something in the code. I don't know exactly what it is because it's tagged with this collection. It's firing off. And is it an ID? Yeah, like something with the branding image that we upload in the collection. So right, but how do you know that to look for that branding image? That depends on the collection ID. Right. So the collection ID. Um, so that's the main tagging element, and then um, so if you go into let's see, find content. We also use Workbench. Palantir built our site. He, he referred to the dreaded Palantir. That's a that's an actually interesting concept. Palantir was great, but we didn't have a great relationship. Our main corporate headquarters didn't have a great relationship with Palantir, in that they didn't allow them to us to share server envi development environment. So they were build this thing in Chicago, and I'm sure it looked beautiful in Chicago, and then to ship it to us in St. Paul, and we'd put it on our server, and it would explode. And we'd be like, oh, it's all wrong or whatever. And it was probably because we just, there was something going on in that. And so we went through multiple alphas in that sort of frustrated level. Finally, we got it onto our environment, stabilized it, and that's when we launched it. Um, and we haven't really worked with them since because we ran out of money. <laughs> we hired Abhishek instead. Uh, and so we actually did. We hired Abhishek because we wanted him to learn the thing and then allow us to maintain it without having to go to an outside um, party. Um, but let's just back to this really quickly. So if you look at the different content types, um, well, actually, let me go to that, add content. So this sort of describes how, where we store and get a lot of the data. So a story is sort of the main element, just a piece of content. A web callout is just a very small story. It's a, it's a story with only a couple pieces of tech data you can put in there. An episode, I describe what that is. It's a, it's a collection of stories with some audio. Um, slideshows, I'll go over in a little bit here. Question is just another type of content, like story. Um, special collection I described, page bio. All right, so every byline on the site is a bio. So when a user logs in and with their profile and creates a story, it gets the byline because that user is referencing the bio node of that person. And that's where we store the photo and, the, and their little footer bio. Um, so um, topic show, this is where we store all sort of the, the information about a show, again, so when it's 
when a story is um, presenting a show branding, it's finding that header in the show. Let's see. Let's look at this. Yeah, let's actually look at this one. So um, where would it be? Branding image. So this branding image is the header graphic that had disappeared. And so whenever a story is, or an episode or anything is within a show, that's, that's where it pulls its image from. Um, but this is kind of an interesting thing to look at. So because we serve more than just our website, we ended up having to add all these different fields that are, seem repetitive. Because when you create a title for iTunes, it needs to look different than when you create it for your website. Um, so for example, we, we changed all of our podcast feeds are now driven off of a show. So every time you create a new show, it automatically comes with a podcast feed. Um, but if you call the show Marketplace, because you need it to say Marketplace right there in your menu, when you go over to iTunes, it just says Marketplace. And really, but in Marketplace, we need it to say Marketplace from American Public Media or whatever it is. Um, same thing happens when you do an episode. So when we publish an episode on our website, we need it to say Marketplace for... Tuesday, January 17th. But on iTunes, you need it to say 01, or you know, 12-01-17. Because otherwise, if you use a nano, you can't see the title. You can't see the date. And we got tons of hate mail because everybody couldn't figure out which day they were listening to. What's that? They're still in the wrong order. And in, so, <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> the reason is because... In the episode field, okay, maybe you can help us through this one. So if you go to an episode, which is what our podcast streams are driven off of, just says, go get the most recent episode for this show and deliver it as a podcast item. Well, we use this thing in here called date. Where is it going to be? Date. And when before we launched, for some reason, we took off the hour and minute. So we can no longer sort by hour and minute. So we've been using, for some of our lists, this date, which is whatever, it's not here, authoring date, which it, only admins can edit. Uh, but really what we need to do is add hour and minute back here. But our IT guys said that they didn't want to mess with the tables or something. They did not want to mess with the schemas. The database schema that was already there, so he was like that. So I, th I think what we decided we're going to do is we're going to add a new date <coughs> field with hour and minute, migrate all the data over there, then delete the old one. I don't know. I mean, these are the challenges yeah, we face day in and day out. That sounds pretty good. It, it reasonable. Easier, it may be easier as well for you guys to store the entire timestamp, yeah. regardless of whether or not you need it, and then just render the portion you need. Well, it, that's it, yeah. Right. So now it's just about getting that for everything in the history. So that's what, you know, every little bug that we find or users find that are like that are just funny things like that. That's really what we're finding out now that we're two months into this thing. So if you go into our bug tracking system, we have about 60 little things like that that need to get fixed. You know, we're just checking them off. Then there's this other section called platform bugs which we have no idea why or what's causing them, and nobody actually knows how to fix them. And it's things like um, content will just disappear. <laughs> so we'll publish a story, and then 10 minutes later, you go back to that story, and the photo has disappeared from the database. Except when you go at it back, the autofill feature puts your credit and caption right back in there. Because... You had obviously done it before. <laughs> and so we think we've, draw, we've drawn out this whole structure of what our environment looks like, sort of the Drupal site, the mem cache, the Akamai, Akamai in between there. Yeah. Then we've got our database, and we've got some slave databases. And so we think that somehow things are getting like an old cache version or something's happening where it's updating. We don't really know. So that's sort of... That's sort of where we are with the, the site day in and day out. Um, so I'd say overall, it's really, Drupal's really great from a producer and a content and like a product point of view. We can do anything we need to do with it. We haven't faced anything yet that we can't do. Um, 
but we are probably going to go to that scaling um, meeting you guys are having or workshop you're having because I think yeah we need to figure out what what we're doing wrong and how to fix it because there's some things happening so let's see we've got some time why don't we take questions or do you guys want to yeah. What are you using for bug tracking? Track? Um, what's it called? It's a track only. It's track. called track. T-R-A-C. T-R-A-C. It's pretty good. We seem, and we have, we, our, our main development team is in St. Paul. That's where our, um, they sort of service us. Where There's a, a bunch of web properties that get serviced out of St. Paul. So we communicate a lot with them through track. We use Redmine until tra until this is this is the problem. So we use Redmine actually. Paul and I, Abhishek wasn't here for that point. So Paul and I were the primary contacts for Palantir, and then once they were done with their build, it came over, and we put all of our bugs then in track. And if it needed to get elevated, it would get duplicated over in Redmine, which was a problem. <coughs> Drupal 7, yeah. How many would you say are using many development modules that are actually because of necessity or Yeah, uh, we are actually using a lot of modules which are still in development stage. And we we get to like uh, we are trying now to uh, the next step of ours is like trying just to update those modules, but uh, we actually don't have to uh, right now because there's no necessity right now. Well, if, there if are a few. Uh, yeah, but those are not like media module. Yeah, but those are not are those not yeah. development? So yes, we are. Using, yeah, I hope not. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Palantir made a lot of those decisions based on where they thought things were in development. Um, they did. I I remember some of their parting words were "update workbench" and um, a few of those. So we're going to do that in our next. We we've now okay. So here's an interesting um, sort of background. When we launched, we didn't have any in-house skills to do the whole deploy process using features, which I'm now talking about something I don't know. Um, so we just now, literally this last week, they now have a dev stage production where you can push code through. And I'm waiting to find out if our first bug has gone through that yeah. deploy so, process. Yeah, this this really might seem weird, but <laughs> when, when they launched the website like two months back, uh, and I was uh, in charge of all the code de uh, development and stuff, and I didn't use features for like because we we still had uh, three different environments: dev stage and QA and pro like actually four. But we I actually did not use features uh, for exporting all the changes because it was not deployed yet. But now uh, things have been changed after two months, and we are actually trying to find a right way for deployment in different environments. So yes, now we have started using features. What did you do uh, before then? I mean, were you writing custom modules that would, would update the scheme of the database or update any other variables that you had? Yeah, I was actually trying to, f uh, I did not write anything, uh, but I was just like fixing things because there were like a lot of things that had to be fixed before we launched. So I was trying to fix things and exporting them very carefully, to be honest. So, so that I, like nothing messes up. So, so up until the point of launch, you were still doing a lot of configuration right there on the production. Up database. until yeah. last week. Until that day. Right? No, until, until last, last, week. last week actually. Oh wow! Yes. Yeah. Until last week. Still on the live site. Still right? on the live Click site. Click button and help that. Yeah, it, everything awesome. works fine. And, and and so this is where we identified a lot of the platform error or issues that we still haven't figured out because you could build it great on dev and stage. The minute you brought it into production, it didn't work. And so we actually only had a couple instances like that, one or two maybe. Yeah. Um, but that's why also we haven't done any of our module updates yet. So we're afraid of exploding. 
It sounds like you got away. I, I, I want to use the word lucky, but it, it yeah. sounds like you guys got away with a lot just because just that sheer idea that you're yeah. completely in the configuration of the database by clicking the site is uh, right. It is. I, no, I'm, I'm, I, that's awesome. That's, I, honestly, it's awesome <laughs> to be able to do that. Yeah. What, and, you should, what you should do is take the site offline tomorrow and protest of SOPA and fix everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it justice, but we could, yes, take down the site tomorrow in protest of SOPA and fix everything. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just curious about like traffic, anonymous versus well, that, authenticated users, yeah, this and is, some of the stuff that you've done to handle your loads. You've got a lot of people pulling in. Traffic has actually been good. So we, we, before we launched, we had taken the site up to about 420,000 uniques a month, and immediately on the day of launch, you see our Google Analytics plateau grow, and now we're at about half a million. Actually, it was about 380 to 500,000 in one month. And it was all search engines. It was all search engines. Because two things, we used to be marketplace.publicradio.org, and that was actually a site about business, a fictitious city in St. Paul, Minnesota, which is Prairie Home Companion, oh, yeah, yeah. about cooking, about spirituality, because we had all of our websites on this domain, and Google was like very confused. Um, the other thing is we use the um, dom what is the, it? the link structure basically has improved now. Yeah. Right. So what is it called though when you mask it with a easy URL? Or the clean URL. Clean URL. Yeah. So that literally immediately all the traffic was search. Uh, did I'll, you I'll find that being on your own domain? Um, as opposed to being on like a subdomain that really affected uh, traffic. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, you, I can show, I can log in and show you the plateau. Just go like that. I mean, uh, Google thought of it as a more reputable domain or something. Or well, basically, what Google does. I mean, this is sort of where I've heard a lot. I don't know exactly what it does, but Google is looking at you know your headlines, your title tags, um, your Sites linking to you, uh, and it's taking all that data, and then it's saying, "All right, what else is on your site? How reputable is all this?" And so, when, like I said, when when Google can cross your site and then get to a a poem about Lake Wobegon, it's like maybe this isn't a business website after all. It's actually smart enough to to make those distinctions. Yeah. Did you did you say that this whole entire site was on like a test subdomain, and you guys moved it up to? It used to be on a subdomain. When you guys were testing that building? No, no, our previous website. So our previous website ran on three CMSs, a series, a combination of three CMSs dating back to 1924. <laughs> uh, felt like it. And so we actually migrated 52,000 pieces of content over here. So that was. And we redirected 52,000. Well, we redirected about 51,000 URLs. <laughs> And then there was about a thousand flat pages that came from a flat directory that we created a root or server level redirects. And that's actually another reason why our search grew so well is because literally, so we went launched at 2 a.m. on a Friday, and I would say Sunday night we were all re-indexed in Google with our new URL. And it had both of them. It would list our new site above the old site. So it obviously found us even before those redirects had to go into place. So that was actually critical, that, that, um, yeah. Uh, I was curious, uh, so you mentioned Akamai, you mentioned Memcache. Can you talk any more about sort of your deployment architecture? And yeah, can I draw it? Yeah. <laughs> Drupal Farm. We've yeah. named it Drupal Farm because we need a way for everybody to understand what we're talking about here. One of our developers in uh, Minnesota tried to clarify it by talking about chickens and roosters and, <laughs> and everything together. So yeah. we came up with oh, this. The so, all right, we've got we've got a chicken, which is which is the browser <laughs> user. Oh, yeah, <laughs> chicken is an anonymous user, and this is what they see in the browser. So that's anonymous. And then chicken little is our logged in user. So authenticated user. Be, and so some of the problems we have actually um, only occur with chickens, whereas chicken littles, you never see the problem. That's why we've identified them. So we figure they make this request and get a request back from Akamai, 
which is our edge server network there. Um, Akamai is going back. Uh, what did we name Akamai? Akamai was the rooster. Rooster, right? Rooster. <laughs> that goes to our pig. So the pig is is Vizzy, and Vizzy is our hosting provider. So they're sort of the environment where everything lives. That's where the core Drupal. That's where the Drupal install is. And so, um, yeah, right. So the pig pulls from a couple different places. He gets fed from many different places. So the main place he gets fed is Farmer John. <laughs> And Farmer John is our our SQL database. My, yeah, my SQL. yeah, my SQL database. Okay, this is very politically correct, but he has two slaves. <laughs> All right. So those slaves. Um, they also have this thing that this very handy wheelbarrow, which they've named Memcache. And we, the wheelbarrow references because apparently that's holding sort of bits of data at certain times that it can pull quickly from. And I think that's the farm. That was well done, Matt. Yeah. And that's how people like me understand it. Um, but so like when our headers disappear, I suspect, well, Abhishek actually suspected that it's making a request and it's coming back null. And so it doesn't show anything. Or when... Um, content gets deleted, maybe there's some sort of thing happening back here where it's... Could you step aside so that we can see? Yes. You guys can take it to this. We can copy it. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, Drupal Farm. Well done. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so we... Yeah, I mean, this is sort of where we've begun to really start digging out into our most... Um, solar for search? Sorry? No, no, we are not. What are you using for search? Just, just a normal built-in module. Drupal search, search, yeah. Which yeah. is not very good. Yeah. Yeah. No. We get a lot of complaints. It's the best open source PHP based yeah. search so. feature in a CMS. Yeah. <laughs> that rhymes with Drupal. <laughs> that rhymes with Drupal. <laughs> that rhymes with Drupal. Well, so it is good yeah. if that's how you define it. What I, don't, I think, I mean, our users demand a much oh. better search. Um, we also have this funny problem. Here's one of the 60 things we need to fix, where it's displaying the date that we brought in that data dump. Um, so there's a lot of stories, unfortunately, that got published on September 20 or September 12th, and so for, it's become like this conspiracy theory among our readers. <laughs> um, but it's just re referencing the wrong date. We have a, a question here from okay. the Google Hangout. Is, is sitemap relevant anymore? Is site map relevant anymore? So uh, for the user to, to, to navigate? For oh, for, oh, for Google. Well, that's funny. Uh, let me turn it over to you guys. Do we have a site map that we submitted to Google? I don't uh, I we think didn't. you did. We, we did not. We did not. I guess. We, didn't. we did not. But, but did Google is crawled. Huh? Did we install site map? There is site map that then I, Yeah, I believe we did. Yeah. Yeah, so Google Yeah, so maybe that's why Google found it so quickly. I, I think... <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it does. does it really? Well, then it forwards. Over, but yeah. Okay, we should fix that. <laughs> Add that one to the track. Um, yeah, we do. I mean, there is still a little bit of a mess out there with changing domains. That probably was the most frightening thing we part of this whole thing. We'll fix that one. So what do we need to do? Just go into our module and change the... Yeah. Never mind. Send us an email. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. Hey, actually, Matt, I would like to comment. The marketplace.org URL, when you're talking about you know your H1 tags and the content on the page, Yeah. Uh, Google will compare. It's one of the... the the most largely weighted things about SEO is the actual root domain of the site. Is it relevant to the term marketplace? Well, if right. the, the domain is marketplace rather than public radio, yeah. you're going to show up higher. Yeah. That's that's it. That's yeah. it. it's as simple as that. That's why people have very long URLs sometimes because those words in the URL are very key to right. what it is that they're doing. 
Yeah. And just to add that, I guess we have uh, meta tags also on the page, and that also helps in like search, like indexing for Google also for like having a page rank and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. They're, they're, they're they're page rank. The top, like, yeah, no, definitely the the right. link structure matters a lot. Yeah. Uh, Are you doing any kind of automated tagging, like open or anything like that? We didn't do that. You know, we actually we there was a consulting company that talked to us about that early on, and we were going to go through all of our. 51,000 stories and do that, but we never did it. But we could have because the idea would have been just map the old CMS ID to the new one and get it all imported. I ended up using Open Calais. Uh -huh. We have about 650,000 pages. Okay. And it made like a 13 gigabyte uh, tag cache. Okay. And it's amazing. It and is. What it does for search. Yeah. So, because then you've got. Now every every city in the country we've got right. a word for and a tag and a page and Google finds it. When you when a someone creates a new page, Open Calais it'll automatically, automatically, so automatically it tags it and find mm -hmm. nouns. Um, yeah, and I've heard and right and make some relationships and, and it makes pages for them. And wow. And you basically you yeah. specify whether you're looking for people, cities, like you can kind of specify how huh. it tags your content. And it does pretty good, especially for like kind of a news centric site where yeah. a lot of the words are in the public domain. Like it does a good job. If you were like a, a leading edge artist site, then you're not going to get much yeah. much bang out of it. But when you're seeing Dow Jones and, and you know, definitely big terms that are, that are well out, we there. yeah, it was definitely one of the things we looked at. I mean, we we had a huge list of things we wanted that got scaled down, and so now it's I think once I we figure we have about eleven more weeks of fixing things before we can start adding. New features. But I think one of the first things we're going to integrate with is social media for, for registration. Um, I was also curious on the, the mobile side. Do you have are they dedicated apps or are you using something uh, you know, like one of the the, the Asylum kits that basically abstracts out uh, the site, like yeah, titanium or something like that? Um, I mean, you mean as far as the mobile UI for the site itself? Yeah, like the, well, I mean, there, there's, for I'm sure there's a mobile version of the site, but you, you so have native apps as well. But I'm wondering, are they, yeah, are they? We've never heard of such a thing. Can you repeat it? Yeah. So, for for developing an app version of our website, you say that there are services out or there are tools out there that will compile. You can, you can write an you can write an abstracted version of your of your app, and then it'll it'll compile it to Android or iOS. Oh. I was, I was wondering if you guys had, had Yeah, we work. haven't done we all of our our first app which we built which is kind of subpar was farmed out to a, a a third party team. So, we haven't done a lot yet. These apps um, are they, uh, they they sort of do it all automatically and sort of all in there. Uh, so there is a, a limitation. <laughs> uh, we discovered that uh, a little while back here at Drop Labs when there was a services training here for Drupal services. Uh, and that is that most of the uh, compiled things that you can do in, so you have this one abstraction layer where you write one app and it will compile into uh, uh, Android, iOS. I believe it also does Windows 5. Oh, maybe. maybe. Okay. Uh, uh, but it is uh, mainly for get requests. So you can't actually post data and get something back in a lot of them. So if it's a static site, if it's anonymous users like you guys have, mm -hmm. and it's just somebody who wants to view the latest feed or whatever it is, it actually is a great alternative. But if you want registered users doing all sorts of stuff with their app and actually storing data, it's, it might not be the best idea for you. Yeah. You might actually have to develop on each platform, yeah. which obviously costs, that drives up, and then you're back to mobile websites, and that's probably right. what should say. Yeah. Like, like hybrid mobile, well, it's not too bad. Phone gaps, big idea. Phone, 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 phone gaps, gaps big idea. For big strides. Hmm. Yeah. And 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 just since those but since those buzz we're not sure. Since the buzzwords are out there, phone gap and titanium very different yeah. in their approaches to how they solve the same problem. What's the second one? Titanium compiles a lot of times on native. Titanium and phone gap. Phone gap. There's no magic beat. There's no magic beat. Is the point, but it just depends on your use case. Is what we're trying to say. Yeah. Did they put all the content into the apps, or no. does it go and download the information? No, no, no. It'll call Basically, out to your to your site, little browser. browser. Yeah, it gives you a really nice mobile web kit. Kind of, you know, it gives you the ideal mobile browser. That's the whole idea of Chrome Gap, at least. I don't know much about Accelerator Titanium, but Chrome Gap from Toby. It's mm -hmm. good stuff. It gives you like, the ideal mobile browser. 
Brian LaRue, the, one of the main guys at Shitoki, gave a talk at TexasJS that I shot video for. I can post a link or something. Great. He's great. He's funny, too. Yeah, if you could put it in the comments of tonight's meetup uh, sure. on, on GDO, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, there's a question here and there's a question here. If you if you want to, okay. you want to answer this. Let me answer the online answer one the first. Did microformats play into the migration? Um, so because I don't recognize the term, I'm going to say no. Um, <laughs> does that who does anyone here know what microformats is? It's, it's yeah. like a structured way of marking up. Uh, yeah, they're really small. Marking up. <laughs> it's it's a, a structured. It's a very particular uh, way of marking oh. up your. Uh, your content. Got it, got it. Um, so would that be, well, let me talk around that because we, we didn't do that. Um, in public media, there's a big um, out open source project going on called the PMP, Public Media Platform. It's an API project, essentially, where they want NPR, which is the powerhouse, wants everybody to create and structure their content in a structured format so that you can share it across the whole network. And so we did actually build around that. And so that um, is, is really just like the way I described it with the show episode segment and then the way we built episode metadata and story metadata. It contained all and more because actually the currently that API is very limited. Um, so we kind of thought forward and of other things we might want to add to it. But which is a cool thing. So one, one thing, one project I have Abhishek work on a lot lately is take some, some segment of content from our website and deliver it in this XML format. So when we, we just signed a deal with this company called Slacker, they're going to want certain bits of our content in a really structured way. And so Abhishek just makes a new view of that, and then we have a feed. So, um, so the, a, the NPR API would be very similar. We would just spit out a certain sort of subsection of our content. Is that, is that semantic web? Like, is it already up tagging and just sort of a schema that you guys are using? Exactly, yeah. Yep. Yes? Can you talk about how you get uh, podcasts into iTunes? Is it uh, a manual plug? Publishing process, or is there an RSS game or something? Uh, we have it. Basically, it's an RSS again. So all of our iTunes feeds um, are managed through this. Well, I can I can basically let you describe this in more detail. No, he's asking like how you <coughs> are uh, imp importing your podcast into iTunes, right? It sounds like you you publish stuff. And like, what's the process? And like, how does it get to iTunes? Okay, so the life of an audio file. So. Um, if you go to the Tech Report, which has a daily podcast, each new episode that's published automatically gets inserted into our XML feed that goes to iTunes based on the fact that it's that shows it's tagged with that show and it's the most recent pub, most recently published episode, and that it has audio attached to it. Um, once it knows that those three things are there, it will update it. And so our producers then just add a new episode. There are a couple rules that we've written around that. So every um, special collection will also generate a podcast XML feed. So if we want to create a podcast called GOP Contenders, we, the XML feed already exists. It would say, go find every story published in this special collection that also has a podcast file attached to it. And then generate the items, based. And then we submit those to iTunes. So yeah, it's, yeah so it's, this is a manual like uh, submitting the URL to podcast through yeah. iTunes. Through iTunes. So once it's been added, then it. Then, then it uh, yeah. Then uh, uh, iTunes is checking every thirty minutes for a new um, feed, and you can actually ping iTunes for them to update it. But pretty much thirty minutes. So uh, with these special collections and, and the different ways that these different node types are. Uh, Relating to each other, mm -hmm. is that all done manually through references, or are you doing it automatically via tags or some combination? It's a reference? node reference, right? Yeah, it's a node reference. So we just—it's a drop down. You get to choose one. Your content is mostly audio, right? So right now, our content is primarily audio, wrapped with some other elements like photos and transcripts. And then, do you 
you have the community transcribe it, or we have a, a producer team that transcribes it, okay. or the reporter will provide a transcript of their story when they file it to their editor. Okay. Have you thought about using the community um, to, to sort of not so much Wikipedia style? Not so much the community. Actually, what we're really looking at is what my goal would be is to not publish transcripts, actually, to publish stories, <laughs> which is what people really want to read on the web. It turns out that it actually requires a much different editorial skill. Um, it's, you know, they actually, on the radio, they leave keywords out on purpose, where on the web, you want to write those in as many times as you can. Um, but... And then the other way is, you know, maybe just like when it goes live, you come up with sort of an abstract or a synopsis, and then we we can actually uh, farm out our transcripts to um, what's Google's service? Um, what's that one called? Mechanical Turk. Yeah, Mechanical Turk. Amazon. 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 Amazon sorry. Yeah. yeah. There's a, Me Mechanical Turk, and there's a few others that will. It's like ninety nine cents a minute. There's one called Casting Words that uses Mechanical Turk. Okay. And I've used both MT and Casting Words. Casting Words is a, is a company built on okay. using the MT. And it's much, it's better. much better. And guaranteed results in a certain amount of time. Yeah. Uh, there are some other ways you can use Mechanical Turk to iterate on transcripts. But yep. it takes a lot of investment. Casting Words is really good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've looked in that. Right now, we have live people who do it. Live people. Oh, I was just curious about, uh, you know, since you're dealing with the audio, audio files, are you pre-processing pre things, or, you know, are you using some workflow within Drupal? We actually have not. Code? That's that's the one thing we haven't brought into Drupal is our whole audio process. So we still, we use a, an old system called David to edit everything. And then from David, it essentially goes up to... A service called Stream Guys, which hosts our um, flash audio <coughs> and then our downloads as well. And so in here, we're actually just putting in URLs of audio files. So there's an RTMP URL and then a, a download.publicradio URL. And so you're basically using that service as your, as your like, dam and your, and your repository of all yeah. stuff as well? Are you, are you maintaining any kind of separate system internally as well to keep like the, the definitive record? Of the yeah, they, the audio engineers have their system so that they use. Okay. That's separate from us, though. Um, but we are going to come up with a solution to use Drupal to somehow manage either the information around an audio file or even more than that, connect to the process somehow. Are you going to play the ads up on the same? We do have ads. We don't always sell them. That's the um, that's the business side of it, but yeah, we have two ad units um, right now. There's just the two rectangle ads. Right now, there's a house ad there and a house ad there. Yeah. Are there any more questions? Come on, the questions so far have been great. Are there any more? Any more online? Is is it just the three of you working on this thing? Basically. I mean, you could say yes. Um, <laughs> say yes. Yeah. No. There, there's. We, we have support. We have support. Farmer uh, John. We got Farmer John. Got Farmer John. <laughs> in the slaves. No. Up in St. Paul, we have a a team. So so we're the first of seven pro properties that are moving to Drupal. And so once we got up, they sort of went on to their next thing. Um, so we really maintain this site day to day and then use them as sort of a support. I'd say about 10% of their time goes to us. So St. Paul, I mean, that's, that's the APM mothership. St. Paul is the mothership, exactly, yeah. And so they, they have people who are in charge of all web properties in general, and then um, you guys are in charge of kind of, yeah. But we have, because we're the largest and we have a lot of expertise, um, they, we sort of, we drive a lot of what they do. And with this site, we were primarily the main stakeholders and team working on it. And then there's really one person up in St. Paul who works on our site, yeah, Peter like, Carmen. Yeah. And what, what would you call his role? Um, like a system admin kind of like who 
knows about the servers from the server level as to the platform platform level basically. Yeah. And then they're oh, I was actually told to mention this. They're looking for a senior Drupal developer to work in St. Paul. Get a little job to, to, to help us deal with these issues. So someone who can because I think that's the one thing that, you know, as a just the, the takeaway here is um, Drupal's great, but if you have a bunch of smart people who don't know how to install a Drupal site, you need to go find that help. Because otherwise, it, I think you end up with a lot of the issues that we're dealing with right now. And so while we're now learning and we're sort of scrambling, and Abhishek's really good at building the new features, I think that sort of having that really deep um, knowledge of how to manage everything is important. So we're hiring that person. We'll be, we'll be happy to fly in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's cold. Uh, hey, ahead, the temperature right now. Yeah, <laughs> two degrees, <laughs> ten degrees. <laughs> a balmy. Yes, a balmy. A balmy. Two degrees. No, we try to go. It, it's it's cold. That's why we live here. <laughs> we may be able to convince them that they could that LA could become our Drupal outpost, but it would be difficult. Yeah. So, so, last question, Tommy. This is just a little nitpicky question because I am a user. So. Okay, we might okay. allow a question after this then. Was it a design decision or something you overlooked to not allow line breaks and comments? I believe that's a Drupal bug. Yeah. It's not hard to fix. Email us. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is, that's on, I mean, fixing Drupal, uh, comment display is, is on the list, but I believe it's that's an oversight. Yeah, right? take it. If it's easy to fix that one. Yeah, <laughs> We could even do it on our production <laughs> environment. <laughs> That's a half a million people you just affected. <laughs> it is. It's instant gratification. We can joke now. Yeah. Are there any more questions? All right. Yeah. Thanks. Trying to find your record button. Somewhere uh, minimized on the dock. Oh, yeah. And the timer, that's, it's on. Can you go in there? I don't know which one it is. There it is. You're trying to draw, I guess. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's, it's down here. It's down here on, uh, you just click on my finger. Right there. There you go. Thank you, Abby.